have never been happy. I'm broken. I'm so depressed. Nothing works for me. The show that you are about to watch is for you who feel this way. A show that will challenge your faith. He wants to take you out of this situation. He wants to take you out of this problem. And your situation is going to change. There is a solution to your problems. Now on the air with Bishop Joshua, the showdown of faith, less talk and more power. Wake up America, the spirit of God is with you. Wherever you may be all over America, this is the showdown of faith. A show of less talk and more power. And today, I said, today is the day where God will bless your life. As a father, if your son asks for bread, you are never going to give him a stone, right? So our God, our heavenly father, also will not give you a stone. He is going to give it to you exactly what you ask for. You don't need to suffer anymore. You don't need to carry a load of problems upon your life. Unsolved problems causes depression. You have this depression because you have also a lot upon your shoulders. Nor without wasting time, we are here to help the society. We are here to help the community, to help those who need spiritual help. Yes, and the number that all the viewers can dial right now in order to receive help, that number is 1-888-332-4141. We have the team of faith there in the helpline, and they are ready to answer your call. You can give them your name, the problem that you are facing. It will be placed here inside of the holy oil. You can also feel free to send your prayer request through text message. One of the counselors you see right now, they will speak to you and also pray for you. You can send your prayer request through text message as well. If you rather do that, the number is 1-888-312-4141. You can send in your pictures, the pictures of your loved ones. That way Bishop Joshua can keep you and your loved ones in prayer. Prepare a cup of water, a bottle of water, sit it close to your television because before the end of the program, Bishop Joshua will be praying for all of you. Here on the Showdown of Faith, we have proof to you that it's possible to have a transformed life. Today, you will be amazed by the stories of these three people. Carielle witnessed fights in her home with her parents. She became a stripper and a sugar baby. She would also deceive men for money. I always want you to be love. So this desire of mine, of be love, led me to go with um, men that have nothing to do with God. 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 Tatiani's family problems led her to be depressed and have hatred towards her dad. I start having thoughts like, why was I was even born? Like, the good thing would be if I go to sleep and I never wake up. And Adrian, whose dream was to become a professional athlete, saw his goals vanished as he began to suffer from anxiety, OCD, panic attacks, and was admitted to a mental hospital. The lowest point, I remember going and checking myself into a mental hospital. So I went there and uh, they couldn't help me. Don't change the channel, because what you are about to watch will inspire you. You are going to see what these three people went through. Their lives were lives of hell. And today, you are going to get to know their story. Please stay tuned. Let us go to her story. She's going to be the first one, Caroline. She went through hell, but God has changed her life. I always wanted to be love. So this desire of mine, of being love, led me to go with um, men that have nothing to do with God. God, God, God. These are results of faith. In my childhood, my father and my mother, they fight a lot. It was domestic violence. 
and I witnessed it and I was very young and I remember I had headaches and stuff like this because of that. I was always in the church but living that my life in the church. So being, being somebody in the church and when I leave the church, live however I want. My spiritual life was up and down, up and down, up and down. For some time I tried to be of God, but always they were, I have this desire to be loved. So always I would find a man. So yeah, he was like this from, from 2010 until la last year. So I was on the fence for a long time. I went deep into darkness. So that's when I was a massage therapist. But it wasn't this kind of massage. It was like happy ending massage. So I would be kind of a sex worker. I would be give massage to men. I was a stripper. I wanted to be um, a sugar baby. So I wanted to decide to be a sugar baby, like to have, be with rich men to give him money. I went out with rich men, with men that have means. I went to some, the best club in Atlanta. So I was using men, like deceiving men, very lying, deceiving men for money. Then I met a guy, so he told me that if I want to be with him, like I need to let, let every other guys go. So I stuck with him, he told me to trust him, but then he would um, be nice sometimes to me and then bring me down. I wasn't happy and I felt like really deep darkness inside of me. And we broke up, he told me not to call him again. So after that, I said, you know what? Now I want Jesus in my life. Because like, I realized that all those days in the church, I never had Jesus, I didn't know who Jesus was. Whatever the pastor was saying, I understood what they were saying, but I didn't understand really what they were, they were saying. And I didn't really experience Jesus in my life. So then I started coming to church like Sunday and I talked to pastor and I told him that everything that happened, like everything that I did and I pray at 3 a.m. for the pastor to, for my deliverance. And I start doing whatever I have to do, Con start converting. Conversion, like I read the books on the first of, uh, of Jesus. I read all the books, like I knew all of that. I knew I have knowledge, but I didn't experience it. So for the first time I started confessing, I understand what was confession. So anytime I would do something that, to kill my flesh, I would feel like I was dying inside of me. Like I feel like death, like it was very hard for me. And when I got baptized, because I got baptized for many, many, I got baptized many times. The first time it was when I was quite 14 or 16, 15, that was the first time. Since then I've been baptizing eight times. Nothing never changed. And I think this time was the real baptism. And when Pastor told me, you want to give up the old life, I started crying. I really made my mind. I said, I want to Jesus. I got baptized and then I started taking the Holy Spirit. So I did my own fast with Daniel. Like the first time that I started with Daniel, I did that, but like nothing ever happened. None of them. The first one ever in the U.S. Church, I did that. I did all of that. Nothing happened. The campaign, nothing ever happened. Nothing ever happened. So I, I was frustrated. I say, I'm not coming to church. And, I mean, I'm not doing the campaign anymore because my life doesn't change. My life is not changing. I didn't realize that because I didn't give, really give my life to Christ. I was only giving money. And money is not going to change nothing. If I want to uh, uh, change life, I need to give the old life. Uh, the third of this month, I say, let me do my own fast with Daniel. So I had to give up everything. I had to, all the guys I was messing up with, I have to block them. My, some of my friends, I have to remove them. My clothes, some of my clothes that was too sexy, I have to remove them. I, I have to go inside of me and see what was wrong with me. So I need to remove everything. Forgive what I have to forgive. Forgive my parents for my childhood. Forgive those men that used me. In this first thing that I did by myself, I received the Holy Spirit. I knew what Jesus was. And I realized that what I was searching in the end of men, it was Jesus. I didn't know that. I could have had Jesus a long time ago because I did just I was 12. But the thing is, I, I was blinded. So now, like, I'm happy. I don't need, I don't need the love of men. 
to be happy because I have Jesus in my life, so I don't really don't care. When we call, come at me now, text me, oh, I want you. I say, no, I want Jesus. I have Jesus. I cannot be with a man that doesn't have the same um, fit as me. So now, like, I'm at peace. I feel like every day I wake up, I feel like I don't, I'm not living in the world anymore. Like, I feel like I live in the other dimension. I'm at peace. I wake up at peace. I sleep at peace. Now I want to save souls. And I understand what it is to save souls because I'm saved. So now like, I'm a, I'm a new person from the one I was before. I just want to have more of God and no more and also give what I'm learning to other people. You can find the Universal Church in all continents Here's where you can find various locations in the United States, in Texas, 7075 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77074. In the Empire State of New York, 1091 Fulton Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11238. In Alabama, 3795 Eastern Boulevard, Montgomery, Alabama, 36116. In the Golden State of California, 1900 West Alondra Boulevard, Compton, California, 90220. In Connecticut, 324 Madison Avenue, Bridgeport, Connecticut, 06604. In the first state of Delaware, 4101 North Market Street, Wilmington, Delaware, 19802. In Illinois, 345 West 95th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60628. You can find the Universal Church in all continents. For our nearest location, call 1-888 332-4141 or send us a text to 1-888-312-4141 It doesn't matter how you are, what your pain or what your suffering is. Jesus Christ is telling you now, speak out, I'm all ears. All the way from uh, Central California. Oh. What's your yes. name and what's your problem? My name is Lou Ann Evans, and I'm calling from El Central California, and I have um, health problems with my um, depression and blood pressure and hair loss and dry skin and back problem and stomach problem. How long do you suffer from depression? Mostly every day. Every day, but I mean for how long? How many years have you had the same problem? Oh, um, for a year. Okay. And do you sleep well? No. You don't sleep? I don't. When you no. go to the doctors, uh, what do they say about your depression? They say you're depressed. They're going to give you pills to help you just so you won't be depressed. And... Okay. And when you take the pills, it doesn't help you? No, it doesn't help me. All right. You know why? Because depression is the disease of the soul. Uh, Nori, did you get her information, her name, her problems? Yes, Bishop Joshua, I did write it down. And Miss Wen, I'm placing your name right now inside of the Holy Oil, and we will be praying for you to be completely free from depression. Uh, Miss and finance. And finance. Your finances. Miss Loen, let me tell you something. You need to overcome the problem that you have in your soul, this depression. Because even if you get money, right? If you get prospered, 
the problems of the family solved, you get uh, healthy again. But if your soul is crushed, that is the pressure, all these problems will come back again. When we have peace inside of us, peace of spirit, we are able to deal with any problem that comes on our way. But you can't, you can't for now, because your soul is squeezed by the problems. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. God is going to set you free from this depression and all the other problems, one by one, will come to an end. Because he said here, weeping may endure for a night, may last for the whole night, but joy comes in the morning. This joy, Miss Loen, is the joy of the soul. You are going to beat depression. Monique is going to get your informations, and I'm going to pass to our pastor in California. We are going to follow up with you, all right? All right. Stay on the line for me, do not hang up. God bless you. Prepare a cup of water because in a few, we are going to pray. Now, Nori has these names of those who are calling us. The device is here with me. Send me a text message. I have this device, and whenever you text me, I will be able to answer you. The text number, please, Nuri. Yes, the number for the text message, 1-888-312-4141. That's the number for the text message. Even if you have a question, you can feel free to send it as well. We have Jacqueline from Washington, D.C. She is asking prayer for peace. Ms. Jacqueline, your name is here inside of the Holy Oil. We have Ms. Tyra from Colorado. She is asking prayer for healing. Mercedes from here in Dallas, Texas. She is asking prayer for complete and total healing. She's going blind and she wants God to restore her sight. We also have Miss Sheru all the way from New York. She is asking prayer for a breakthrough in her finance. Miss Sheru and those mentioned, your names are here inside of the Holy Oil. You can call the helpline right now where you will speak to a live person. The number for the helpline, 1-888- 332-4141. You can give us a call right now because help is at hand and is just a phone call away. Um, my name is Tatiani. I'm 24 years old and I'm a TV producer. A lot of problems started uh, happening in my parents' life. The marriage wasn't doing so great. They started fighting a lot because my dad, he spent a lot of time out of the house because of his work. He spent uh, weeks out. I didn't talk much with my mom either. I didn't like my dad, I didn't have friends. So I started having thoughts like, why was I was even born? Like, the good thing would be if I go to sleep and I never wake up. I had a lot of medicines at home because I needed them. But my mom, she took, she tried to take all of them to commit suicide. She wasn't able to do it. But in another day, she put me in the car and she started driving because her plan was to crash the car and her and me ended up being dead. But then my mom, my dad actually, he was, he couldn't go to sleep while my mom was awake. So he spent a lot of time at 3 a.m. watching TV. And that's when he saw the program of the Universal Church. It's happening in every neighborhood. The Showdown of Faith. And he invited my mom, they started going, the marriage changed. And my parents, they stopped fighting the way that they used to do because every time that they were at home together, we used to fight. They started having a more healthy relationship. Um, I saw, I could see the change because my dad, he was always stressed my mom, she was always crying and that stopped. So we used to hang out together. My parents, they were having a really healthy relationship. 
but I started being the problem because I would still be the stressed kid, the depressed kid that I didn't want to talk with anyone because I thought that everybody was a problem and not me. And when I started uh, high school, I started having the, I started being addicted to the pornography. I was always there in the church because of my parents, so I've already heard of what I had to do to change my life because it wasn't only me praying to God and as if magic, my, my life would change. I told God, okay, if you're saying that you can make a miracle that you can change my life, then I'm gonna give you this chance. If there is something that I need to start doing, then that's what I'm going to do. And it wasn't easy. It was difficult because there was a lot of temptation. There was a lot of uh, thoughts that I used to have, especially when I was praying. There was thought that, thoughts that would come and say like, I don't know why you're doing this. God is not gonna hear you. So even with those thoughts, I start praying harder. I start meditating the Bible doing whatever I could, fasting, just to get closer to God. And I um, I stopped doing all the things that I knew that was wrong. The pastor will always say like, you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what was going to change your life. I started noticing of how important the Holy Spirit actually was, actually is. But I didn't want it to be deceived by my own emotions. Of course, I was really happy when I did receive the Holy Spirit because you cannot be happy, but it was something that I could control myself. But the main thing was that I just knew that God was with me. He told me like, I'm fi you're finally mine after all these years. And Those depressive thoughts that I used to have they disappeared. I didn't want to die anymore. I fell off for the first time. And it was a love that I knew they wouldn't be just temporary because I knew that God was with me. I had peace, something that I never had. I don't hate my dad anymore. He, he and my mom, they are my best friends. I had a job that I never thought that I would have because I never studied for it. I don't need to depend on friends or relationships to feel like I'm loved or to feel, to be fulfilled. All of those stuff, they're not more, they're not more important than having the Holy Spirit. I could lose my job, I could lose my parents, but I can't lose the Holy Spirit because he was the one who completely changed me. He was the one making me really happy and I'm always at peace and is the love of my life. <laughs> and it's something that I never imagined that I could feel like this, that I could be this happy. So he's my biggest treasure. Prepare your cup of water. In a few, Bishop Joshua will be praying for you. We have shown you the stories of Cariel and Tatiani and how their lives were transformed. But don't go anywhere because soon you will watch the story of Adrian, whose dream was to become a professional athlete, saw his goals vanish as he began to suffer from anxiety, OCD, panic attacks, and was admitted to a mental hospital. The lowest point, I remember going and checking myself into a mental hospital. So I went there and uh, they couldn't help me. Just as you have watched these two testimony, now is the time for us to watch the case of Adrian. He almost ruined his life, right? You are going to watch now that this young man, he had a career ahead of him but he left his sports for drugs, for bad company. But praise God, he's about to get married. His life has been transformed. He came to us on Fridays for deliverance. He is free now and he has the Holy Spirit. Also has his wife to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The depression that you have inside of your soul for sure will come 
to an end. You've tried nearly everything. Now is the time to see how strong prayers work. My name is Adrian. I'm a professional athlete. My parents were always forcing this and and sort of pressuring me into this university thing, this education thing. I always wanted to be a professional athlete ever since I was eight years old. So I worked hard. I remember working hard when I was, uh, ever since 12 years old, I started taking my sports seriously, training every day pretty much. And I remember going to school, I got an athletic scholarship. So I was blessed to have that. I remember going to school and doing the education thing, but really, it wasn't for me. Like, I mean, I went there and I was all about the girls, the partying. Every weekend, I remember ever since first year, I was in the club. Not just one day a week, but I was in the club Friday and Saturday, every day, almost religiously, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. School was on the bottom of my list. And it it got to the point where I even drifted away further from my sport. I stopped training as much. I stopped working out as much. It just, I I was focusing on that life, the party life, you know. When the depression started, it it just didn't start all of a sudden. What happened was I remember training. I I had left school. I had turned professional in my sport. And so I remember training down in Florida. So I remember going to the club. I met this girl and, you know, it seemed all right. She wasn't the most mentally stable person. And ever since I realized that this became a distraction for my career, I remember ending it with her. We were only dating for maybe a month month or two but things got really weird I started getting really weird thoughts I started having the panic attacks um, and it wasn't just panic attacks it was anxiety it was doubts it was fears all kind of random thoughts and I remember an OCD to begin with as well and I remember just laying in bed just constantly ruminating about things and stuck in the house you know taking a long time to do things you know it progressed for a few years and it got to the point where you know, it was affecting my daily life. My quality of life really started to suffer. It was affecting my career. So what ended up happening is it started affecting my training and I had to stop playing. So OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. There's the OCD that makes you sort of a germaphobe and that's where you feel like you have to wash your hands and that sort of thing to get rid of germs. This was not that. I was not afraid of germs. And, I'm, and, and that was not the case. The, what it was is I felt that if I washed my hands or I took a shower or I did this or I did that, it would cleanse me of whatever evil is around. So it, the thoughts would tell me, wash your hands, keep washing your hands, keep doing this, keep taking a shower, clean this, clean that to get rid of the evil. There's evil there. There's evil, there's evil behind that. I remember going to psychologists. I did their therapy that they said, you know, their psychological therapy, you know, they did say it was OCD, that sort of thing, but you know, there was no answer. Nothing could help me. I remember going and even taking some natural herbs, natural supplements, trying to fix that, no answers. My lowest point, the lowest point, I remember going and checking myself into a mental hospital. So I went there and uh, they couldn't help me. I was hoping, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get drugged up, everything's gonna be good. They didn't even give me any drugs. They didn't give me anything. I just remember still being in tears, panic attacks, heart racing, seeing shadows, and the OCD, the, 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 the rumination still continued. Nothing, nothing changed. There was no answer for me. One night, I had just fallen asleep on the couch downstairs, and the radio was on, and it was, it was playing um, an infomercial from the church, and it said, um, do you suffer from a generational curse? It, uh, these are the symptoms. I heard that and I was like, I was right in the middle of a panic attack, seeing shadows in my room. For some reason, the, the radio was just on. And I just said to myself at that moment, I was just like, I gotta go to this place, whatever this is. I remember going there. I remember receiving a strong prayer from one of the auxiliary pastors. And from that, that moment on, I just, I remember feeling a lot lighter. And they told me about the chain of prayer. Then soon after that, I got baptized in the water and life, life started to change. I knew it was on the right track. So the first things that I was delivered from 
would be the panic attacks, the anxiety. So I was there to focus on God. I was, I knew that I needed help. I knew I was in a desperate situation. So I just applied the teachings. I remember I would go to Monday service for financial, Wednesday for the Holy Spirit, Friday for deliverance, and Sunday for everything. And I would evangelize and I would keep going. I would participate in the youth group as well. One Wednesday, I was seeking the Holy Spirit and it was like, it was just me and God. Nobody was around. I was just so focused. And I remember I was, I was completely, completely focused in my faith. And I remember it almost felt like I was moving closer and closer to him. And I remember having this joy, this kind of excitement. I couldn't even describe it because it was, it was just me and God. Nobody else was around. And I, I, I knew from then it was the Holy Spirit because nobody could ever make me feel that way. From then, I was feeling fulfilled. And I knew that my life was complete once I received the Holy Spirit. After receiving the Holy Spirit, no more attacks. The thoughts may come, but I am strong and I know how to deal with them. I don't let the doubts and the fears control my life. Upon coming to the church, my life has changed completely. I began competing again, training again, and year by year I've been getting better and better, more skilled, and working harder and harder every year in my sport. I have peace in my mind. I, I can think clearly. I can function the way I used to function and even better. It gives me great joy to say souls and to work with the souls in the church and I look forward to serving God for the rest of my life. God has blessed my love life. I'm about to get married. I'm just in awe of what God has done and I'm just eternally grateful. I couldn't imagine my life with such an amazing woman. She also has the Holy Spirit and has a strong desire to save souls. You that say you're going through panic attacks, anxiety, OCD, insomnia, depression, I want to talk to you. Go and test God. Test God. Use your faith and, and determine. Do Come to the church. Do everything they say. Do the chain of prayer. Apply the teaching 100% and say, my God, you need to change my life. Close off your ears to all these fears, these doubts, these insecurities. Do exactly as the pastors tell you. Do exactly as the Word of God says. And then you'll be able to know whether God is or God isn't. So for you, I just want to tell you at home, there's a way out. I know because I'm an example of it. Now you can grab your cup of water, your bottle of water. It is the moment of the prayer. Prayer is our communication with God. You watched the testimonies. You heard the word. But now, please close your eyes and prepare for the moment of prayer. In life we have. We are going to pray right now. Remember, if the Father, the Son asks Him for bread, He, he will not give a stone. There is no Father like that. Your Heavenly Father can answer you right now. Let us talk to Him. Get right now your water. Close your eyes. God Almighty, you are the Heavenly Father. If the human Father never gives, never gives a stone while you ask for bread, you never give, Lord, you never give a piece of stone, a rock, when your children are hungry. And there is this person that is hungry, in need of spiritual help. All the testimonies we have seen here today are living proof that you are the same, that you can do wonders in the lives of those who believe. So Holy Spirit, I am asking you right now, my Father, that you visit this person that is in the hospital. One, two, three surgeries 
dispersa cannot cut this body anymore. There is dispersa every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, going to dialysis. Depend on a machine to filter the blood. Lord, make the kidneys to work once again. Remove, O oh Lord, all diseases, all pain. Let this person be healthy again. Remove the spirit of addictions, depression. Deliver this person, O oh Lord, once and for all. O oh God Almighty, when this person drink this water in prison, in the hospital, at home, this water will be in your power. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Praise God. Amen. In hospital, in prison, at home, wherever you are, drink. The water is blessed. I stand on your word. I stand on your promise. I stand on this word here can never fail. When, when you stand on this word, you are secure. You are on the rock. The word of God shall be fulfilled in your life. Thank you for watching the showdown of faith. But don't just keep watching the testimonies. Be the next. Join us again tomorrow for another powerful show filled with more life transformations, words of faith, and a special prayer at the end of the show. The showdown of faith. Less talk and more power. Subscribe now to our YouTube channel, Showdown of Faith TV. And tune in Monday through Friday at 5 a.m. Central Time, 6 a.m. Eastern to watch a show of less talk and more power that teaches you how to fight against your problems with life transformation stories, prayers for you and your family, and a word of faith. What are you waiting for? Subscribe today and don't miss any of our programs.